what's going on, good people? What's going on? It's your boy Cam. You know what I'm saying? Vinberg Project, Augsburg Phoenix. You dig? Uh, I got a blog too. I'm thinking about. I got it on Medium. But I'm thinking about going back to Tumblr because I just, I just like the look and the aesthetics of Tumblr. But let's pray. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Father, Son, and Spirit, we just praise you. As our people listen, as people watch, we just ask that you would uh, just increase our faith and, and, and uh, help us gain understanding and insight into your into the mysteries of the gospel, into the reason why you sent your spirit to us as our comforter, our counselor, uh, our advocate, and the gifts that he gives us for the edifying of the church and for the loving of our neighbor. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So, yeah, so today I want to talk about healing, healing, man, and like a lot of people, it's a very, I'm talking about physical healing, um, inner healing would be another topic, but a lot of people are very skeptical nowadays, you know, as to, you know, does God physically heal today? Absolutely, yes, emphatically, yes, I definitely believe that with all my heart, um, does God use, um, means outside of medicine um, and doctors. You mean like like supernatural healing. Does he do that today? Yes. Now, very first thing I'll say, very first thing I'll say is whether or not someone gets healed is all God, okay? To say someone's relative or someone didn't get healed because of um uh, because of um, a lack of faith, you know, like on on your part or like the part of your relative or whoever, it's bad teaching, bro. Bad theology, man, because God is sovereign. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes he might call somebody home and sometimes he might say, no, uh, I'll let them carry that cross for reasons we don't understand. And it's rough, man, because we only see one side of it here on this life. Like we only see like imagine if. Um, you know, the Bible talks about the book of life, different books, right? Um, the Lamb's book of life, uh, you know, those whose names are not written in it, you know what I mean, won't go to heaven or I'll blot their names out from the book of life, that kind of thing, right? But we're just, on, we're the ones that are on the pages. He's the one who's like outside holding the book. We're in the book, right? He's holding the book of, of our lives. So we only can see the page at a time. So God can go back 20 pages or 20 years. God can go forward 20 pages or 20 years and see other things that we can't see. And so I just want to encourage you guys with that. Um, God, uh, again, is the, is the author of where the healing takes place. Now, there is a gift of faith and gifts of miracles that... Um, the Bible also talks about 1 Corinthians 12. Those are spiritual gifts. So, um, you know, you have everyone is given a measure of faith. Uh, and Jesus said, if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed. Um, but this gift of faith, I believe that that gift of faith and the, the gift of miracles are tied together. But that's another topic. Um, but for us, for us in terms of... Um, we praying, we praying uh, for someone, and then having confidence and faith that God uh, will, will heal them either in this life or the next. Absolutely, we pray God's will be done, and God, if it's your will, uh, new text he, he heal message from plus one five seven one eight zero zero eight eight four zero. So, you know, like uh, what is it in James? James said, um, James said, um, you know, if anyone's sick among you, what do you do? You, you, you take them to the elders of the church, right? You anoint them with oil and then you pray. And then it says they will recover. And then it says their sins will be forgiven, right? Did it say they will recover right away or whatever? No, we just, we just trust God. We say, God, you know, heal this person, restore this person. And that's what I think the Pharisees didn't understand about Sabbath. Okay, what's the whole point of Sabbath rest? Well, what about restoration? What better rest could Jesus give people um, on the Sabbath day than to restore them? Like, you know, the lepers, the blind. Uh, he, I mean, he did a lot of miracles on the Sabbath. Um, 
because the Pharisees got it right in, in the sense of that, yeah, it was a day of rest. Um, but the miracles that he did a lot of times on the Sabbath were specifically physical healings, right? What was he doing? He was trying to restore because you can't have restoration without rest, right? So, but for us, um, why is it that we hear so many stories? Why is it that, you know, we hear stories about physical healing all over and why are we so skeptical you know um it's like we hear them more overseas than we do in the states but we hear them in the states too but we question the doctrine of those who uh who lay hands on these people we question the validity of the healings that kind of thing um why do we do that you guys uh i think I think it'd be, it'd be, you know, wise of us to maybe kind of examine those things, you know, like for example, uh, well, this is not talking about physical healing per se. I have not yet read this, but it's called, I am not afraid. It is a book by a Lutheran pastor who experienced some like severe spiritual warfare out in Madagascar. He was a missionary out in Madagascar. It's an island off of, I don't know if it's, it's, it's an island off of Africa's coast. I don't remember if it's on the, if it's on the East coast or the West, but this Lutheran pastor and today, statistically, by the way, 96% of Madagascar is Christian, and 96% of those people are also Lutheran. Um, but man, like, he encountered some serious stuff, and we, we, it's like, it just, it just doesn't get t talked about. Um, just like, like healing, but people are like, uh-oh, go to the doctor. There's nothing wrong with, though, your pastor um, anointing you with oil and laying hands on you. And then, then, you know, take your medicines, go get your surgery, watch your diet, do all that stuff. You know, don't be right. Like we have a uh, Dr. Luke, you know what I'm saying? We have the, the, the physician Luke. Luke was, um, you know, like he, he wrote Luke and Acts. And so if God wasn't a fan of doctors, if God wasn't a fan of modern medicine. Um, you know, I've worked as a clinical chaplain. You know, I have seen stuff that 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 uh is not easily explained um so for example i was in um charleston south carolina and an infant were, uh was born unconscious and he was literally uh brain dead for about 23 24 minutes now if you know anything about someone being brain dead like once the oxygen uh, once you lose oxygen to your brain for five minutes, like, uh, that's it. Like you get permanent brain damage. And yet this infant was brain dead. This is Charleston, South Carolina. I, you know, I, I'm not a mega preacher. I'm not a TV preacher. I have no ulterior motives. Uh, I got my MDiv, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm confessional Lutheran to the bone. I fully subscribe to the book of Concord, you guys. And yet... In my chaplain work, I have seen stuff that cannot be easily explained. How do you explain um, an infant, much less a, an adult, an infant with, with a stronger you know, immune system, stronger brain, all of that, uh, stay brain dead for 24 minutes and then come back with no mental health problems? Straight up, God healed that person. Now, the people who laid hands on that infant, yes, that infant was prayed for. The people who lay hands on that infant uh, and the people who were, the, were praying behind the scenes for that infant, doctors, nurses, everybody was praying. And um, and uh, uh, they were the conduit, they were the facilitator, but it was God's power and God's design for that infant to, to not come home. Uh, not yet, you know what I mean? The infant has work to do. Now, please, disclaimer, for everyone who has lost a child, lost a loved one, tragic accidents i'm a war veteran like there are a lot of things that happen uh that god um that god you're like well god where were you why'd you let this happen some of it some some of it we may never know this side of heaven but there are some answers which i'll get into in my next video okay um <clears throat> but you know maybe maybe i'll tie it into god's sovereignty and the spiritual gifts so we can bring those two back together. All right, Augsburg Phoenix at gmail.com, Vindenberg Project on YouTube.